All right. All right, let me check and make sure we're all live. Sound is on. Ow. Check, check. Oh, my sister-in-law's there. Hey, Courtney. Hey, buddy. All right, so I called it online worship, which I'm going to have to rename that file later. Called it what? It called it online worship, which is online not. Online worship. It is not that. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hey, bud. Uh, no, no, no. There we go. Okay. All right. We'll do that. Maybe hand sanitizer up here. <laughs> nope. Oh. Well, we'll get we some just later. Lick, lick your hands right off. Yay, Courtney! Who else is Is it just you, Courtney, or you got the, the clan there, too? Oh, Tana's there. Good, 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 good. My Quarantine mind. life is wonderful. It is. We just sit at home all day, working from home. Went for a walk today. Walking around the, around the neighborhood. Man, the weather was nice. Good weather today. I'm so glad that we had that sun. That the kids could play outside a little bit today. That was really good. It was really good. Uh, a few more days of rain. Might have been it. All right. The beans. Great. Good, good. Oh. Hey. <laughs> oh, hey, Deidre. Deidre. Karen. Good. Great. Great. Hey, Karen. Well, everybody just coming in. Hey, we're going to be in John 18, so if you want to grab a Bible and um, a cell phone. Yeah, th that's the catch with some uh, folks, you know, using their... If they're watching us on their cell phone, they can't yeah, use it. You're using Bible. your uh, your normal Bible to stream for. That, that kind of yeah. makes things a little more complicated, doesn't it? You know, go run real quick and <sighs> blow off that mm -hmm. paperweight version, you know. Yeah. We'll be ready here in about 30 seconds. John Petty. Now, hey. John, John's actually annoyed about this because he was, I'm sure, looking forward to teaching this last Sunday. Uh, yeah. Or this, uh, yeah, it would have been this last Sunday. So, um, we're sorry, John. We, we stole it from you, buddy. Um, and John's... Probably going to go live stream teaching it himself on a different, Amen. on a competing YouTube channel. Oh, I'm man. surprised he's not doing that right oh, now. Man. If we have that, if we have dueling channels, we'll be in trouble. Okay, everybody, welcome to our class uh, for uh, for today. Yeah. And uh, we are going to be in, uh, in John 18. And so if you want to grab a Bible and, uh, and join us for the study. Um, and uh, for this... More so than what we've done, what we did on our Sunday stream, we're gonna pay. We, we will be paying attention to the comments, um, and Rylan's gonna help mm -hmm. a lot with that. And uh, we're going to, you know, so if you have some questions that you want to ask about uh, the text or about something that we say um, as we go along, uh, then you are welcome, um, welcome to do that. Okay, All right. I'm gonna grab Rylan. I'm not gonna grab Rylan. I'm gonna make sure and plug my Thank computer you. in. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> We got 14% battery. Yeah, we need to make sure we have all the battery that we need. What an amateur. I'm telling you, right? Unbelievable. And we just waited Hey, for the Bakers. All right, and Andrea is here. We were just waiting. This is great. Yeah, we're waiting on you guys. That's why. That's right. <laughs> all right. Andrea Davis. Very good. All right. Well, we're glad that you guys are all here. Um, and uh, that we can join. Sorry, I had to. Man, I just flubbed that. I, I made sure. I'm glad I had the cord and I didn't have to run That's across right. the street to my to house to get it. <laughs> that would have been. I don't have one of those. But even worse. So, okay, everybody, we are in John 18, and uh, we want to uh, share this now. Uh, this is something is going. This this text would feel very familiar, okay, because it is part of the passion narrative. It's part of the story of uh, Jesus' uh, arrest, uh, his betrayal, his arrest, his uh, death, and, um, and of course the resurrection. We call all of that together, we call the passion. Mm -hmm. okay? 
Um, like the movie. We saw yeah, the movie. Yeah, that's right. Passion yeah, of the Christ. Yeah, and it comes from a, a Latin word meaning to suffer, okay? And uh, the, these are the things that happened to Christ in his suffering. And in this part of the book, uh, John, uh, of course, is going to hit a lot of the familiar elements. So we have... Uh, we have a garden scene in the, of, the, of the arrest. We have the uh, the trials, you know, uh, and then we have, um, uh, you know, of course, the several elements of the crucifixion that are going to be similar too. But um, like everything else in the gospel, John does it in a very distinctive way, right? So tell me, hey, I'm going to put you on the spot here, Roland. Tell me some of the things that you've noticed that are kind of different about the way John has done a lot of the book before now. Uh, that might be different than what you would read in, say, Mark. Do you have any kind of comments? About um, oh, man. I think uh, the way that he portrays Jesus talking to people and how he, oh, yeah. he you, you don't see a lot of his sermons. You see mostly his reaction to people asking him questions about his sermons. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot about just who Jesus is. It's like John had um, a theological statement that he wanted to make maybe that that um he wanted to explain more than anything just who jesus actually was right uh, versus like what his teachings were right and then you have these observations about his relationship with the father which mm-hmm. are very different than um, what yeah. you get uh, in the others and also you have less of these just kind of like one and done little like stories where he just he interacts with a group of people and then has some like kind of wise saying and then goes on to the next story. You know, like Mark tells all these stories that are like, you know, six verses long. Um, John's stories aren't like that. They're like 70 verses long. You know? <laughs> There's some long chapters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The chapters are, are much longer. And a lot of times you have these like, you're right. The way he talks to people, he has these like <laughs> these, uh, these long extended conversations. So if you think about it, what we've seen in John, like, um, you have the conversation with Nicodemus in chapter three. You have the woman at the well in chapter four. Um, in you have the long conversation about like the the meaning of bread and you know mm. that you're eating his flesh in chapter six. Uh, uh, conversation with the people who liked him, where he yelled at them for a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That uh, in chapter that's at the end. Of yeah, chapter it was like his too. followers, yeah, right? Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. And then you have, uh, you got chapter nine, there's this like long, um, not just conversation with Jesus, but long kind of dialogue with the blind man and the people that are kind of investigating mm-hmm. him. You get something like that in chapter five as well, too, but with the, the person that's healed there the, um, at Bethesda. Uh, but you have these like different like conversations that are super just long, drawn out. even like some of the miracle stories, like the Lazarus story is, it's a resurrection story. You have resurrection stories in the other gospels, too. Mm-hmm. But the resurrection story of Lazarus is like this long chapter. It has this like all this back and forth to it. So all of that is different. You know, all of that is um, uh, unusual in the way that John tells his story. And so we're not surprised when we come to uh, chapter 18. And John is going to tell that story in his own way, too. Um, And it has some twists and turns. Um, And it's very... Uh, Johannine, okay. That's the way you. That's the that's Johanine? the that's the adjective that you use to describe something. It's very Johnish. I think okay. Johnish is better. Not Johannian. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you could say it that way. Uh, yeah. Too. Yeah. Uh, but it, uh, Johnish is the Johnish? that's the folk way. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make that a thing is the way people <laughs> talk about it. But um, it, it's Johnny? a very Johnny. <laughs> no, you can't do that because that's like Johnny. a name. Yeah, because that's just. Maybe that's what we mean when we say Johnny. Um, You're very much like John. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Sorry, uh, rabbit trail. Sorry. Yeah, sorry there. We're very yeah. It's, it's it is very Johnny. It's very John-ish uh, sort of way of telling the story. Um, and I want to pick up uh, two particular ways of doing that. Okay. And the first one is the maybe the lesser of the two Johnny Johnish sort of ways. And that is to kind of pick up the theme of betrayal, okay? Um, Now, John, in order to kind of get this, we need to dip back a couple of chapters, okay? And think about the betrayal as something that really is being keyed off all the way in these this. This, this long conversation between chapters uh, 13 and 17, like we've kind of been anticipating the betrayal. Yeah. Okay. And actually, there's a mention of Judas uh, before that. Okay. Um, we get it in, let's see, it's in chapter chapter 12, in the first uh, few verses of chapter 12. Uh, there's this 
um, moment where Martha's or uh, Mary Lazarus's sister comes and anoints Jesus's, you know. Feet, yeah. Right? So this is where where she uh, uses the oil and and it says mm-hmm. Judas says, you know, why didn't you sell that and give it? Because he yeah. was he was the one in charge of the money. Right? That's right. Yeah. So yeah. he uses. Yeah. And it's not just like he has his criticism, but John. You almost get the re- the feeling that the writer of the book like can't stand Judas. <laughs> oh, he hates Judas. <laughs> He's very bitter about it. He was a it. thief. He says it. He was yeah. a thief. Yeah, he says it like uh, there's this kind of you know we had these other notes about things that they realized later, kind of coming back like oh they didn't realize that Jesus was talking about his body or whatnot. Like I think this is that kind of note. It's like we didn't really know it at the time. Uh, yeah, but... he was stealing money. Yeah. So what it says is Judas is scared after she, um, Mary has poured this perfume on Jesus's feet and it says Judas is scary at one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him. Like that's, it, it yeah. is like already telling us that, that about Judas. Um, and then it says, uh, why, uh, he said, Judah says, why was perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? It, like he calculates how much it could be paid sold for like immediately. Right. Um, and then it says this about him. He said this not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to st- and used to steal what was put into it. Okay, and so and then Jesus kind of rebukes him after that, uh, and then you know onward we go, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in chapter thirteen, um, we get this couple of things that I think are pretty pretty significant after the. Washing of his disciples' feet. Mm-hmm. You know, again, notice the connection there. Do you notice the connection to this, by the way? That like in chapter 12, chapter 12, the ending of the first half of the book of John ends with somebody washing Jesus' feet. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and, she and started, then it starts yeah. with that, him washing someone else's Yeah, right. So it kind of like bookends it out. And so uh, in this story, Jesus um, washes his disciples' feet. Of course, he has that interaction with Peter, you know. Um, and in that interaction, you know, he's, Jesus says, Peter, Peter says, you're never going to wash my feet. Okay, so this yeah. is chapter 13, that's verse 8. And then Jesus answered, unless I wash you, wash you, you have no share with me. And in verse 9, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. And then mm-hmm. verse 11 gives us another note, right? For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. Okay, so we're kind of... Throwing some shade. Yeah, yeah, we're throwing some shade already. And Jesus, on the words of Jesus here. Mm-hmm. Somebody, he threw some shade. I mean, yeah. that's what I meant. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. In the words of Jesus, Jesus says um, something indicating that one of them is is to be betrayed. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, that's gonna um, that's gonna come down a little bit uh, for more here. That's gonna intensify uh, because after this, um, after this, after he's kind of done with the um, the washing of the feet, in verse twenty one, it says this. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, "Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me." And that is, uh, so let's pick up that, right? Like, it is it is very telling that when Jesus um, is troubled in spirit here, it's because of the fact of his betrayal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's not mm-hmm. just, I'm going to suffer, I'm going to go through these hard things. But Jesus is in anguish. He's anguished because um, he's about to be betrayed. He's going to stab him in the back, right? Yeah. And that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, last time we talked about how Jesus's glory came when he knew that his apostles believed in him, right? Right. And exactly. so you can understand, like, this is a good juxtaposition. Is that the right word? Yeah. Sure. Against that, to say that, you yeah, know, there's belief, and then yep, yeah, yeah. and then there's Judas who uh, does not believe, and therefore, and betrays him, and that's what's giving him the most grief, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly right. So you have the thing that's. Filling Jesus with joy, okay, mm-hmm. and then the thing that le- uh, fills him with anguish is his is his disbelief, you know. Um, all right, and so then we get um, Jesus is going to develop this a little bit, right? Like, so he says, "One of you is going to betray me," and as the disciples are wont to do, they start 
chit chatting about what he means, right? Yeah. Um, and the disciples looked at each other, uncertain of what he was, of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus lo- of Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. And G- uh, Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. But I, I love this, by the way, that like it's not just so he asked him; like it includes the note. So Simon Peter motioned to him, not even said to him or whispered to him. It's like, so it like literally the text is like, ask him him who it is, John. We need to know. Just ask him, ask him. You know, you kind of get this uh, sense there. Um, Mm. So, so here we go. So that's, so that's what's going on um, in this part of the moment. Okay. And so then we have this, all right, and I'll get this bit. Uh, and so while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? And and I can imagine him saying it like out of the side of his mouth, right? Like he doesn't want to call attention. He's like, who is it, Jesus? Okay. Uh, and then Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. And so when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered him. And Jesus said to him, do quickly what you're about to do. No one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought it was because Jesus, Judas had the commas purse, that Jesus was telling him, go buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. Mm. Ironically, because he said that <laughs> in chapter, yeah. uh, you know, the chapter 12 thing, right? And so after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out and it was night. By the way, that night thing is very intentional, right? Like mm-hmm. it's the falling of night comes with, yeah. Judas's movement to betray. Okay. And John's all about light and darkness, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so the apostles are still confused because Jesus only answered the one, right? He didn't yeah. say it out loud to everyone. So right. there's only one guy that knows, and maybe Peter. I don't know. Peter told him to ask. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, you get the sense that there's something going on, but not everybody understands for sure. Yeah. So there's something I want to pick up here though in this story. Um because this story kind of flips a bunch of symbols on its head. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, namely, you know, okay, so this, what is it that they're gathered here? What do we, what is it, especially if we think about it in the other gospels, what do we think of them, this moment is that they're, that they're gathering in to do? For the Passover. Right, right. And, and the, and the other the festival and the, around the Right, exactly. And the gathering that we think about in the other gospels that Jesus has with his disciples right before he's betrayed and arrested mm-hmm. is what? The Last Supper, yeah, the Last Supper, right? Like where he institutes the the Lord's Supper, where he mm-hmm. and in those he like takes bread and blesses it and said, "Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. You know, uh-huh. or this is the the fruit of the take the fruit of the vine, the cup of the fruit of the vine, and uh, which is the blood of my covenant, which is given for you." And so you have these um, these other stories. The other gospels tell these stories of this like Eucharist, the the Lord's Supper, where Jesus gives thanks. And then he breaks the bread and he gives it to his disciples. And it's kind of what will become for them this great ritual, um, you know, of the church. John, in his telling of his version of the Last Supper, the only person that Jesus gives bread to is Judas. I was looking at that. I I guess I missed it. He doesn't even have the Lord's Supper in John. This is it. Yeah, this is it. And uh, and how what a strange way to do it. Yeah. Right? Um it really is. I know. I see you're like, no, uh, I can't, that can't uh, yeah. be right. That I can't that be right. It's, like, sure, it's here somewhere. No, this is it. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is as close as we get. And there's some there's some other reasons why I think that is. But like, but I just think, you know, we've talked about how John takes symbols, um, mm-hmm. baptism and, and communion, and he kind of like scatters them through the book and kind of shows their meaning. Like the water, the water to wine episode in, in the um, Cana miracle, you know, and um, and then these stories about he, him standing up and saying, I, you know, I'm the, I give you living water, you know. Um, and, and in here we get this Eucharist kind of uh, this communion episode, but uh, it center the person who receives it. It centers around the character who who will moments later uh, betray Jesus. Mm hmm. So I think that's meant to say to those of us who gather at the table, I think it kind of calls us to look at that sign that we receive often. And like, it ought to make us like, hold up a second, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Like taking that bread doesn't mean this it's not like automatically, you know it's not a magical like talisman yeah. or something. Um yeah. and you know, we've got a lot of good comments uh about how just Satan had, had entered yeah. Judas and um you know, at that moment, right? And so it's like the opposite of communion. It's like yeah. an anti communion or something. You know, yeah. like we think of taking the communion and having the Holy Spirit with us there. Um, but this says he took it and Satan entered him. Yeah, it's like that's what I mean. It's like the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of uh, of a magical yeah. communion, yeah. So which makes me just scary. Follow. yeah, yeah. It makes me think, um, you know, as we take, um, you know, as we take the bread, like the bread is a part of our discipleship, mm-hmm. right? And we're there, we commune with the Lord. The Lord does break the bread and give it to us, um, but um, but we should be in that in that moment of taking the bread. Like I do think we're we're meant to kind of weigh our faithfulness to the Lord. You know, recommit our faithfulness to the Lord, and we have always the possibility of um, of choosing not to. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think that's part of this story. It's a very, it's a very strange. Oh man, that's Karen. That's a great insight. Uh, bread, it, we use it to mean money. You know, cash mm-hmm. in our. In, mm-hmm. um, and here, um, here the emphasis with Judas. Um, I just, I just think this is a strange. Judas is the only, only disciple in this story that Jesus, Jesus gives this broken bread to. Isn't that something? <laughs> I'm glad you pointed that out because I wouldn't, I would have just read right over that. Yeah. Uh, so that's really cool. Yeah. Um, well, it's part of emphasizing. Okay. Now, so here's, here's something that I want to just kind of blow your mind with a little bit too. Uh, oh, again? Yeah. I love this. This is my favorite thing. I like doing it live. <laughs> okay all right so um that 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 connection of communion and betrayal is not as weird as you might think all right paul in when he talks about the lord's supper in first corinthians chapter 11 listen to the way he introduces the story uh this is verse 23 of first corinthians 11 for i receive from the lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night, not when he was arrested or killed or anything like that, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Isn't that interesting that the language of betrayal is even in Paul's like what on the night he was betrayed, you know, and that's kind of like liturgical. A lot of people mm-hmm. use that liturgical language even today mm-hmm. when they, when they're, you know, show, talking about the Lord's Supper, introducing the Lord's Supper. But it's not on the night he was arrested. Like that's not that's not the language that yeah. the early church used to describe that. It was on the night that he was betrayed because the betrayal that Jesus was somebody that not just like some faceless machinery arrested and killed, not just uh, some, um, you know, zealous lawman. Okay. That it was, it was one of his closest disciples. It was one of his disciples who betrayed him. That's like integral to the story of Jesus's suffering. Yeah. I, I guess that's the more emotional thing that happened. Right. So that kind of makes sense because yeah. I mean, of course, like the, the, uh, leaders in Jerusalem wanted to capture him. I mean, that was, that was kind of known, but the, the betrayal was, I mean, I guess Jesus knew about it, but it hurts more, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that's, that sounds really human to me, right? Like, I mean, um, betrayal feels awful. Yeah, it does, you know, and, um, there are very few lonelier feelings in the world than than feeling betrayed. And, uh, it is a, it is a kind of human suffering, um, it's kind of an intense human suffering, you know, um, and, and here Jesus in John seems to go at great lengths to kind of highlight uh, that Jesus is Jesus is betrayed. Yeah. And but, we've all felt that too, right? It's yeah. happened to everybody. We've done it to other people. I mean, it's, it's a human experience that, that yeah. uh, you're right, that we, we've all had. Yeah. But, you know, it's also too that uh, I think another thing that he's highlighting, which is important to his whole story, okay, kind of pull us back into John, um, John 18 is uh, that even though he was betrayed, he wasn't tricked, okay? Mm-hmm. Jesus hasn't been bamboozled. Right. Um, he knows it's coming. And in some way, he almost sends Judas to do it. Yeah, kind of the other way around. He Yeah. He's doing the bamboozling in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, he, he is certainly aware mm-hmm. of Judas's intent. He's certainly aware 
of what will happen to him because of it. Okay, and so it's not that um, Jesus is betrayed, but he's not ambushed. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like, oh, you caught me. I couldn't get away. Like, Jesus has time. And if he wanted to evade this whole thing, he absolutely could. Um, yeah. Uh, I think part of the reason that that's underlined for us, and we can, and we're definitely going to see it as we read more in John 18 now, um, that highlights Jesus's control over this situation. Okay, what's going to happen? Not that Jesus is making different people do it. I don't think I'm not. I, I'm don't have that kind of view of the um, way sovereignty works in the story. Yeah. But Jesus, Jesus is very much allowing these things to happen and is knowing willingly and knowingly uh, walking into this situation. Okay. Where it's, where it's going to play out. Um, and even though things are happening to him, listen to the way this, uh, tr- this uh, arrest story plays out and see what you'll see what I mean about like the way Jesus is depicted as being in control. It's very, it's, now that's a common thing in some of the other gospels, but it is like it just pops off the page in John. Okay, after Jesus had spoken these words, he went out to with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place uh, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. And then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, right, came forward and asked them, whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you're looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those that you gave me. And then Simon Peter, who had a sword, struck, drew it, struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. And Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into, the sheath, into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the father has given me? Okay. All right. So you see what I'm saying about Jesus kind of being depicted as Mm -hmm. in control there. Okay. Uh, Let's start from the back, from the end of that. Okay. And pick up a note that said, what's, so what's the last verse there? Verse Uh, uh, 11. uh, Not no. Yeah. Yeah. 11. (laughs) Yeah. Tell me the last phrase that he says here. Uh, Shall I not drink the cup the father has given me? Okay. So again, we That's kind of like a, yeah, like the Eucharist. Yeah, yeah it's an like illusion. Yeah, it's again an illusion to the supper. And again, John John isn't giving it to us straight. So does John, in John, does it have the prayer that says, uh, may this cup pass from me? Okay. No, yeah. So and, it's John knows about <laughs> these other gospels, right? Or something. Absolutely, absolutely. He's yeah. riffing off of some of these ideas that we already know from. But backwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah like exactly. in the other gospels, he says, if it is your will, let this cup pass from me. But in John, he looks at, G- at Peter and says, "What am I, I? Should I not take the cup that's mine to drink?" He's saying, Br- "Bring it on!" Yeah, right. Um, and and that's that's a significant difference. What's what's underneath that difference? Well, it's it's the portrayal of Jesus as being in control. Yeah, you know. Yeah, um, and it's and it also is this like significance of the. Um, it's the significance of the cup to uh, so again this kind of calls disciples who are who often gather around a cup and it reminds them that this is what they are consuming is yeah. the call to sacrifice you know yeah. yeah Andrew puts it pretty well he says I love that Jesus willingly goes with them but leaves no room for anyone to think that he doesn't have the whole situation under control he almost pushes it yeah he kind of does it's like <laughs> yeah. yeah bring it yeah let, let these guys go. And there's a point behind that too. Okay, so there's a couple points. The first point is just this: the control, the sovereignty of Jesus. Jesus is the king in this. They story. fall down before him. That's weird, right? <laughs> yes, it's weird. You're, I know, isn't it? It's like you look at the story, you're like, I know the story of the betrayal <laughs> yeah. of the crucifixion of Jesus, but you read it, John's version of it straight, and it's like, 
wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, yeah. The whole mob falls down um, because he comes forward, okay? Um, <laughs> verse 4 says, he comes forward to them. So D- Jesus doesn't just wait for them. Mm-hmm. He draws up to he them. And then he says something to them. What is it that he says? <clears throat> Who is it you want? Yeah. And they say, Jesus of Nazareth. And he says, I am he. It's me. Um, and then uh, and then they all step back. He's stepping forward. They step back and they fall to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a remarkable piece of the story. Okay. And then he does it again. Now, I'm, and the, the, the picture of this is, I mean, it's amazing. This mob of people is laying on the ground. And Jesus is standing over them. And so he says, again, over, I mean, he's over them, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he says, who are you looking for? And they say, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I told you, that's me. Let these other guys go. And I've, I've seen some movies about this, right? And I, they've <laughs> never shown this part of the scene, right? Have you ever seen one where they... Where well, they do this? there is the so there's a version of the Gospel of John, yeah. which I'm gonna. Ha- I, I haven't seen that. Actually, I want to do like an internet watch party with that. It's that on cool. Amazon Prime, okay. And so anybody that has that, we're gonna have a time. I haven't decided what time yet. So sometime very soon, we're gonna just we're gonna. This is gonna be crazy. We're gonna watch that movie and like stream together, like while like responding to it as yeah, it goes. I like that. I don't know how that'll go. It seems magical, but we're going to try do that now. That's the thing people do though. Yeah. If you don't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we're like live, live streaming yeah, yeah, that yeah. Yeah. of us watching it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, mm-hmm. so that does capture that scene a little bit, but it is still, it is like super bizarre. Yeah. Um, and, um, the point of it, this kind of gets us to the other point of it. So what's the point of him saying that? First of all, it is that he's in control, but there's something else going on. What else is he doing when he's, when he, when he asserts himself that way? He's fulfilling a prophecy. So like he's, he's telling them, uh, I'm the one you're looking for. Let, let everyone else go. Right. Yeah. So, so he's like, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I will I give myself there. to you freely, no fight, nothing, but let all my disciples leave. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. He's making sure that they get off the hook, okay? Which is super significant for John specifically, okay? Because what what has Jesus been teaching them about the way that they're supposed to live in the world? Like that conversation between chapter 13 and 16, what was he saying? He says, um, the thing that's going to mark you guys as disciples is your love for each mm-hmm. other, okay? And then in chapter 15... He very specifically says, um, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. And in the story of John, of Jesus's betrayal and arrest that we get in John, it's very clear that he steps in front of this crowd for the sake of the disciples. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, (laughs) He says, no, no, you're going to let them go. I'll go with you. That's the way he uses. So he's in control, but he doesn't use his control. He doesn't use his power in the situation to get away. He uses it for the other people there. Yeah. I haven't thought about that connection. Um, Usually when we think about that verse, we think, oh, that means I'm a friend of Jesus. because He died for me. And that's true, but, but we don't think about... How it like immediately happens a couple chapters later. Right? Yeah, it's right there, and 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 John really highlights it too. Like in the other gospels, you know, Jesus um, Jesus is arrested, and he goes, and there is a sense of it. This is the thing that's happening for the sake of his disciples. Okay, mm-hmm. especially you know, as we know, that's the theology of the church and all that. But but John just makes it so explicit. Like kind of got, it kind of gives us a way of seeing that it was for you know, it was for them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Andrea, that is an excellent yeah. point. Okay, Andrea says. This is the courage that he wanted Peter to have. So Peter thinks he has he's going to join Jesus in taking control mm-hmm. of the situation too, but he does it differently, right? He, does. he chops off someone's ear. Yeah. <laughs> and for some reason they don't kill him. I don't understand. <laughs> because of Jesus. Maybe because they're all laying on the ground. Yeah, I mean, it's because of Jesus. Yeah. Because Jesus' yeah. intervention on his behalf. Um, by the way, this version of the story doesn't t- John doesn't tell us that uh, about the man being healed. It tells us his name, but it, his name is Malchus, but it doesn't tell the part where Jesus like takes his ear and puts it back uh-huh. on and heals him and heals him. I think, is that the Luke version? I think it's, 
Oh, Luke, I'll I look up that up here. So, <laughs> but the um, yeah, let's just look at this up. Somebody may know this. They may know this offhand. Which version it is that where he where he heals the man? It'll take thirty seconds. Here we are. We're in. That's Luke. how far behind we are from. Oh, from people them. are watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to beat them to it then. All right. So it says in uh, in this is Luke chapter twenty two. It says one of them. It doesn't say it was Peter. One of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But it doesn't tell us the name, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but Jesus said, no more of this, and he touched his ear and healed him. I wonder if this was a thing back then, like, who is this guy? We got, we need to know. Yeah. Uh, we need John's to know who like, has the magic ear. I want to know that you guys, I know that I had that story. Well, I mean, there are some traditions that this guy becomes a yeah. disciple, you know. Yeah. Um, I think there are some, um, I don't know if anything, there's nothing in the Bible about it. But, you know, this is one of those, one of those things. Yeah. And Andrew says, uh, she's referring to the denial of Jesus, and so um, that's also true, right? So Jesus yeah. wanted Peter uh, to have the courage to, uh, or I guess he wanted to show him that he didn't have the courage, right? Yeah. And then yeah. He, he's modeling the courage that he should have had. Yeah, yeah. So instead of Peter's willingness to say, to at his own risk, when he is being a- accused, say, yes, I am with him, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. I will gladly, you know, take on whatever suffering is is his, Peter avoids suffering for himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now I don't know what he's, I have no idea what he was trying to do there in the garden. You know, it's just one of those things. It's just one of those things that happen, you know, in yeah. the gospels was recorded and they each told, and they, I love that John and Luke tell different details about it. You know, that there's one that's just healing. You almost, I almost wonder if like John, know, like the author is like, knows this guy later. And he's like, I'll tell you who it is. It's Malchus. You know, the guy that's <laughs> yeah. part of that church. He's part of that church down in uh, Antioch right yeah. now. You know, he got yeah. left, ended up leaving Jerusalem. Um, you know, the guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know. They, you know, they you hear stories about first century Christians and the, and the like legends that they have and things yeah. like that. Like when Jesus healed someone or touched a kid, that kid grew up to be so-and-so who was one of the yeah. founding fathers or whatever. I don't know if they yeah. maybe thought this guy was some kind of a, who knows? I don't, know. I don't yeah. know. But at any rate, we get that story. It's a it's a fascinating story. I love the way that both of these two things, um, the way that John tells this very familiar story in a way that brings to light um, these pieces of this theology, right? Um, that he is in control, but uses his power for the sake of other people, uh, not for his own sake. Um, and, you know, and also that Jesus, Jesus indeed... Um, he is but he is betrayed like he he experiences this human this very real human suffering and he allows that to happen mm. okay he calls he calls Judas out but not in such a way that prevent him from doing it you know um, yeah and he could have yeah very much right. could have um. yeah. so so this is these are the kind of key key features that I wanted just to kind of pick up uh, tonight um uh yes yes that's right that's right andrew the the high priest's uh, servant yeah um and of course we're going to go from this and we're going to have like some other um other interactions in the trials we're not going to we're not going to pull through all the pieces of the trials uh, tonight um but uh we are headed towards you know when jesus walks away with with them here um in verse 12 it says so the soldiers and their officer and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. And then they take him to Annas, uh, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest. And it says Caiaphas is the one who would advise the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. That's something that happened earlier, John. Mm-hmm. Um, he was. He seemed like he was okay, kind of. Is he uh, the okay one, or is he? Or is that uh, no? Well, you'll see. Yeah, <laughs> we'll kind of not that, great. That'll not kind of great. Play out. Um, we are going to pick up this Sunday uh, in chapter nineteen, um, where. Uh, where Jesus has been um, sentenced to death, okay? And uh, we're going to pick up with the story of the crucifixion and look at the way that John portrays that and um, gives us insight into who Jesus is uh, in that in that phase of the story. Um, uh, folks, if you haven't, uh, if you're not on our church email list, you're not going to get the announcements today, okay? I don't know that we should, we probably don't need to read out, you know, stuff, Personal stuff. Mm. Those have usually have uh, hospitalizations yeah. and things like that. We're not going to read those out on our live stream. Um, but uh, if you if you don't get the church emails, then uh, email uh, the office 
at cedarlanechurch at gmail.com. We'll make sure those get to you. Melissa sends those out every Wednesday. She does a fantastic job. Uh, thanks, and, Melissa. Yeah, thanks, Melissa. Melissa does a great job of doing a lot of things that keep our uh, keep her congregation running. Uh, and she and Jennifer have done that for a long time. I appreciate it. But uh, if you will email them, she'll make sure that you're on our email list and you'll get not just that Wednesday night announcement sheet, but you'll also get the stuff that we send out on uh, the, we send the bulletin out live uh, or Friday afternoons and, uh, and those sorts of things. So make sure and do that. Um, and then besides that, we're going to, we'll be back on uh, Sunday morning. And so at nine o'clock Sunday morning, uh, we'll be ready for, uh, another live stream worship. And we got a couple of things. I say we, I've got a couple of things up my sleeve for that Rylan. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> I'll find out uh, when look, you do. I look forward to blowing your mind again <laughs> live. Uh, no, we've got uh, we've got some contributions that I think are really neat, and, and I, I can't wait to uh, share them with you guys. Okay, um, so we will see you on Sunday morning, and I can yeah. normally when we say that we're like, well, maybe we'll see you between now and then, but probably mm, not because of the not. way the world's be. working here. Everybody, yeah. stay home, um, be yeah. safe, uh, and then remember to continue to engage. I've heard lots of great stories about. Um, anytime I've called some, I've called several, you know, several people from our church, uh, some, uh, and I'm calling to check on them. How are you doing? And then they'll say, oh, so-and-so just called me, you know? And, uh, so I know that you guys have taken seriously that challenge to, um, uh, to be making sure, uh, to check on other people in our church. So keep doing that. Let's keep, uh, let's keep working together to get, get through this thing, um, together. Okay? Yeah. Thank you for everyone who joined us tonight. Um, thank you for all, all of you commenting. Uh, Karen, you had a bunch of great funny comments and I just couldn't keep up with you. So, uh, thank you for all of those. Um, thank you uh, again, everybody. And we miss you guys and we love you guys. And Jordan needs help moving tomorrow. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll give you a call, Jordan. Okay. We're going to make sure to get you taken care of. And, uh, oh, the Sprouts have a video. Mm-hmm. I know the youth group was doing this, like, <laughs> Zoom yes, thing. Yes. They're doing it right now, I think. Like a scavenger hunt. Yeah. Kind of deal, oh, think. that's was, awesome. I think it's part of what they were going to do and, in the uh, houses. Yeah. And so we watched the Sprouts video. It's great. Oh, you've uh, already watched our it? Kids haven't watched it. <laughs> it oh, just you mean just you and Sheree yeah. have seen it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I watched about half of it and then you came over, I think. And so I, I love finish. story time with Uncle Andrew. Yeah, you know, like when he's you guys, reading if you haven't been stuff, keeping up oh, with man. this stuff that so our children's ministry and youth ministry are doing online, check check that out too. They're pretty good. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll see you guys later. Uh, grace and peace.